Of course, uh, Georgia football typically boasts one of the better secondaries in college football year to year. We expect more of the same here in 2020. The dogs go to practice here in mid-March, uh, the 17th to be exact. We've got Palmer Thomas on the line from Dogs 247 Sports to help us break down position by position. So check out the videos and subscribe right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. J.R. Reed, big-time player, all-SEC guy, gone uh, besides that, in the secondary, uh, the rest of the group stays pretty well intact. Yeah, I mean, that looking at the cornerbacks, or I, I guess we'll start at safety since you mentioned J.R. Reed. Um, you know, R Richard LeCount decides to come back for his senior season. That was a big, you know, big announcement that Georgia fans were really excited about. Um, you know, at cornerback Eric Stokes decides to come back for his fourth season. It will be his redshirt junior season. And so, you know, those two guys pass up on the NFL draft, um, you know, and and decide to come back. I think that's, you know, going to be huge for Georgia. Um, you know, just looking at looking at the depth chart here, Eric Stokes, DJ Daniel, Tyson Campbell, three incredible cornerbacks that they, they play, all played. Um, you know, Campbell comes into Georgia in 2018, starts his first game as a freshman, uh, starts, you know, for opposite of DeAndre Baker. Um, you know, so he's getting picked on because they're not throwing at Baker, who, you know, turns out to be a first round draft pick, you know, Jim Thorpe award winning cornerback Campbell gets picked on and probably midway through that season. Um, I guess probably three quarters of the way through Eric Stokes comes in as, you know, in replacement of him against Auburn and earns that starting position. Stokes keeps it for the rest of the season. Baker sits out that sugar bowl and Campbell and Stokes become the two guys. Beginning of 2019, those are your two guys. Campbell suffers a turf toe injury that you know just was nagging and and you know, was difficult for him to overcome. And DJ Daniel steps up. You know he he's a guy that came out of JUCO and um, you know stepped up opposite of Eric Stokes. So once once Campbell was back, you saw those three guys rotating. You're gonna see those three guys rotating again. Um, you know, Stokes, Daniel, Campbell, all draft eligible after this season, which is pretty incredible to look at that, you know, you could have three guys that aren't, you know, with, with, with two corners on the field, only two of them, you know, but three of them playing regularly, n not all of them can be starters. And, and it's pretty incredible to think that you could have three guys coming out of Georgia that could be, you know, draft eligible, you know, draft prospects in 20, after the 2020 season. Um, and another guy that I think, you know, is really going to excite fans, um, you know, kind of a hybrid corner, uh, you know, safety guy playing the star position, Tyreek Stevenson. He came on really strong end of his freshman year. Um, you know, he, he's got a really good chance to compete for that star position. Kirby Smart loves that position, loves his DBs as a former DB himself. Uh, and, you know, I think Stevenson is a bigger cornerback, you know, has the speed, has the physicality. He can really compete for that star position against the likes of Mark Webb and Devon Wilson, who you know were both starters and you know but both got valuable minutes, uh, you know, valuable snaps. Um, and then you mentioned, like I said, at safety, Richard LeCount comes back. Lewis Seen replaces J.R. Reed in that Sugar Bowl. Um, likely to see him as the safety, you know, along with Richard LeCount. But I think you know the big news is that LeCount comes back. You know, his fourth year, he's he's been a guy that, you know, fans love. You know, you see him after a big win. He's animated. He's jumping into the crowd. You know, he he's a turnover machine. He, he's, you know, feels like he's always there when when the ball is on the ground, when, when you know, forcing a fumble, you know, recovering a fumble. He loves those turnovers, the, those spike pads. And, um, you know, so I think Richard LeCount is really going to be the heart and soul of this defense. Uh, and, and then you've got the talent on the outside, uh, you know, with Stokes, Daniel, and Campbell. This secondary is really lining up to be something else. And, you know, that's not even mentioning, you know, freshmen coming in. He won't be here till the fall, but Keely Ringo, number one cornerback in the country. Um, you know, they, they have Jalen Kimber, who's an early enrollee at cornerback. They have Major Burns, who's an early enrollee at safety. So, you know, and, and Darren Branch as well, um, you know, who's going to be coming in in the fall at corner. So, you know, they're loaded and they're going to be loaded for, you know, a, a while because, you know, like I said, Stokes, Daniel, Campbell, LeCount, all draft eligible after this season. 
but you've got the number one cornerback coming in, you know, incredible, you know, guys coming in as well. Um, you know, three, four, five star guys coming in uh, at, at corner and safety. And, and you've just got, you've got guys like Tyreek Stevenson. Um, you know, like I said, he's not going to be a starting cornerback, but he has the talent that he could be a starting cornerback. And he's, he's probably going to be in more of a hybrid fifth, sixth, you know, defensive back look where you're going to see him in those specialty packages, but he's got the talent that, you know, if Stokes or Daniel or Campbell were slacking or, you know, got hurt or whatever, because injuries happen, Stevenson could step in and, you know, be a lockdown corner in the SEC, which speaks volumes about him. Palmer, to me, uh, individual offensive stats mean a whole lot more than individual defensive stats. They have to be taken into context. Uh, sacks and interceptions, I believe, are overrated. That doesn't mean they don't mean anything. If a guy's getting 20 sacks, he's obviously a monster. Or if a guy's getting six or eight picks, he's he's a great player, most likely. But it's it's overrated because they quarterbacks shy away from defensive backs, cornerbacks that can really ball hawk. And obviously, great pass rushers get double teamed, and we could go on and on why they don't matter as much. That said, LeCount gets four picks. Uh, the rest of the team gets three. Seven picks for a Georgia defense that's ultra-talented. You mentioned all those great cornerbacks, and when I say great, they're not great players yet, but they're great talents. They they were just at the top of their class, almost everybody that you mentioned at corner. And I, I got to think maybe... Uh, are they needing to develop some ball skills? Because again, I think the interception stat is overrated and doesn't mean a whole lot, but it means something. And they would love to get some more turnovers out of these guys. And all the guys that you mentioned at corner, no picks. Yeah. I mean, and that was a concern of Kirby smart. Um, you know, the, the, they really were getting more pressure on the quarterback, but it wasn't resulting in more turnovers. Um, like you said, LeCount, you know, being the leader back there with four picks, um, not to mention, you know, two forced fumbles and three fumble recoveries for him. Uh, seven passes deflected as well. So I do think I do think you're going to see, um, you know, Stokes in his first year of starting, you know, in, as a full time, you know, starter. DJ Daniel, his first year of, you know, D one college football, SEC level football, and Tyson Campbell nagging injury. I think you could see some of those guys really step up and you know have a breakout year this year you know, in a experienced role, you know, knowing the guys that they're going up against, you know, that they're going to be playing uh, and, you know, no bigger test for the secondary than week three against Alabama. Yeah. I would just think that that zero number in the cornerbacks interception column becomes a six or an eight collectively, not from one guy, but collectively uh, from those Georgia cornerbacks. Uh, Palmer doing a great job here, breaking down Georgia's positional units. Please check out all the videos. Right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, and of course, subscribe. Palmer, special teams coming up next.